In the pro scene throughout history, there have been tons of standout players. They all bring something to the table and Nico's no exception. Besides being one of the strongest players, always making into the top ranks, there are more reasons he's known. He's never clinched a major title throughout his career. Everyone who follows Major ought to remember this fact. Even if Nico hasn't achieved massive feats as part of the team, he's still one of the strongest players out there. So in this video I'll showcase his in-game settings like audio, video, Nvidia and mouse configurations. Don't forget before we kick off, smash the subscribe button and drop a like on the video. Also drop a comment mentioning the settings of which pro player you'd like to see showcased in the next video. Let's start by looking at his devices and their settings. He's using the Logitech G Pro Super Lite 2 mouse. The main difference from the previous model is the ability to set the refresh rate to 2000Hz, aim at reducing input lag. As for sensitivity, he's got 800 dpi on the mouse and in-game settings at 1.69 with a zoom sensitivity of 1. His headset is the Logitech G Pro X2, delivering top-notch sound quality and the comfort. Here are his in-game sound settings. EQ Profile – Natural This preset keeps the sound untouched, delivering them to you without any processing. Left and right isolation – 100% This ensures a strong distinction between left and right. Perspective correction – No Sound sources at the edge of your field of view will sound distinctly panned to the left and right, respectively. Nick has gone for a less common resolution, specifically 1350 to 1080. I covered how to set this up in my first video on the channel about overall settings for better FPS. If you're interested, you can check it out using the tip in the top right corner. His go-to monitor, familiar to most pros, is the Zovi XL 2566K, capable of running at 360Hz, but he sticks to 240Hz to keep a consistent field between home gaming and tournaments. Brightness is set to the standard 93%. Boost player contrast turned off because it can eat up a few FPS. At long distances, especially when the opponent stands in the shadowed part of the map, it can make them appear more like a black spot than a player model. Vertical sync disabled because it ties FPS to the monitor's refresh rate. For instance, if you have a 60Hz monitor and vSync enabled, your FPS won't go above 60. Multi sampling anti aliasing mode set at AXMACA. Smoothness the visuals for a more pleasing and less jacked gaming experience. Global shadow quality set to high. Model and texture detail set at medium. Affects texture quality, offering no competitive advantage but improving the game's visuals. Texture filtering mode Anisotropic 4X. Similar to the previous settings, it affects texture quality. Shadow detail set to high. Enhances effects like Molotov Fire, improving their quality. Particle detail set to low to preserve FPS as it doesn't affect image quality. Ambient occlusion set to high. Enhances realism by calculating light intensity and shadowing. High dynamic range quality. Controls the brightness range between the brightest and darkest pixels. Fidelity FX super resolution disabled. Highest quality. Nvidia reflex low latency. Enabled with the boost mode, aim at the reducing system latency, increasing PS response speed and slightly affecting FPS to minimize delays. To get the game running smoother, you gotta tweak the NVIDIA control panel, the video card settings. First up, set the monitor refresh rate to 240Hz. Then in Edges desktop color and settings, make sure digital vibrance is sitting at 60%. He had that set up before in CSGO. In the Manage 3D settings tab, he's got these settings. Power Management Mode – Prefer Maximum Performance Texture Filtering Quality – High Performance And Vertical Sync is off. The final tweak Nico makes in the Adjust Text Size and Position section when he puts in these settings. Scaling Mode in Full Screen Perform Scaling is GPU and checks the box for override the scaling mode set by games and programs. Ok, so now let's dive into the crosshair settings. The truth is, he changes them all the time, as he said, because in CS2 it's tough to find the same one, so I try out different options to find the best fit. Here's what I'm using right now. 
Crosshair color 5 Style 5 Size 1 Thickness 1 And gap minus 9 That's how it looks in the game I'll leave the code for the crosshair in the video description. His hand settings are pretty standard as we've all gotten used to. I covered this in more detail in one of my previous videos where I delved into Rob's settings. So if you're curious about why the pro is using specific view model, you can check out the video by clicking the prompt in the top right corner. But just to refresh your memory, view model field of view 68, view model offset x 2.5, view model offset y is 0. View model offset Z, minus 1.5 and view model preset pose 3. The last thing you might find useful in his settings are related to his rudder. Rudder centers the player, yes. Rudder is rotating, yes. Rudder hot size, 1. Rudder map zoom, 0 0.35 and toggle shape with scoreboard, yes. Those are all the Nico settings that could be helpful for you. Remember, coping his settings will make you play like him because the game needs to be adjusted to suit your style. This video is just to help you find some useful settings and general trends. If you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You'll find even more interesting videos there. See you soon, bye bye!